It's happening. Adults across the country can buy cannabis. People have a lot of questions, so I invite some friends over to talk about it. Joining me today is Bob Yechik, leader of the Trillium Party. You let the private sector loose, prices are going to go down. Tracy Curley, patient advocate. You're going to be walking into a store and it's like you're shopping for radioactive granola. And Derek Ogden, ex-RCMP drug enforcement. There is a real danger that the rec market could steamroll the medical market. I'm Chuck Rafici, and we're talking the biz. For the first time, we're going to be collecting a lot of tax revenue from cannabis. Where should we be spending that money? I would like to see some of the tax money collected going back to some of those compassion programs for cancer patients and HIV patients, MS patients, and, and, and pediatric patients, so, not to mention research. I would like it to be going directly to my mortgage payment, but you know what? <laughs> That's not going to happen. Where it's going to be going is the big hole in the ground called uh, the provincial and the federal budgets. Point is they're going to get a whole bunch of money, put it in a big hole, and it's going to go wherever they want it to go. But we're spending it already. We're offering money to the RCMP, we're offering money to the police forces, we're offering money to the provinces. We don't even know what the money is going to be, but we're certainly spending. Why are we paying money to the RCMP and the police forces? The, I, I, I don't, maybe you can explain this, Derek. Yeah. How does it cost more to not enforce a law? Uh, <laughs> I still, I think there'll be still a lot of resources put toward enforcement. And I think in the initial stage, especially when the governments are trying to wrest the industry away from the black market, they'll they'll really concentrate resources. So, Jared, so are I, you saying that they'll put that money towards enforcing the shops that aren't paying taxes to drive them to essentially close down more illegal activities to drive more tax revenue? Is that kind of the cycle? They they could. I mean, that th that money will go into a general pool and it'll get divvied up. But I so, I don't. The people that so. think that when they flip the switch to legalization that it will stop. Uh, all the policing costs related to policing cannabis, that, that won't happen. So the police I, I want think, more I money. Think, I think it's I ridiculous it. to say that it, it, it's going to cost more. I think I think that's unreal to me. Like it's a reason to have more ask for more money. You know, they're like, oh well we have to worry it. about people on the roads. Well Cannabis consumers have always been on the roads. Yeah they have and I I don't think that it will cost more, but like, I, I I think there's a lot of people that really don't know a lot about cannabis. They don't know about the cannabis industry. They don't know about the uh, impaired driving aspects with cannabis. And I think they're, they'd be well suited to, to tunnel some of the money into those areas. I absolutely agree. And I think um, like education is something that we're, we're forgetting about. Even with the medical marijuana side, Doctors know very little. Mm -hmm. um, patients are being forced to go through websites to kind of get educated rather than actually have someone face to face to kind of help them maneuver around this, this strange little landscape that mm -hmm. is, is legalization of marijuana. And, and people crave that information. I, I, we've held uh, sessions where they're just open sessions, ask the doctor, and people are, it's standing room only. So, you know, we're hearing about, you know, law enforcement education are going to be components. The federal government has capped their portion, about $100 million a year that can go towards, they've identified the RCMP, law enforcement and Health Canada. What should Health Canada be doing with, with their portion of the money? Uh, research. Up until this point, Health Canada has only ever studied the harms of cannabis. Mm -hmm. There's been no money to actually study cannabis and HIV. There's been no money to study cannabis and epilepsy. I, I would like to see those studies that everybody says, well, you know, there's not enough research. Mm -hmm. Frankly, there's been no other thing on the planet that has been researched more than cannabis. But I think we actually need to target that research. I would never advocate that the medical system is working uh, perfectly. It needs a lot of improvements, but it's it's the system we have. It's much better than it was 10 years ago. Um, but I going would, back, I would, I would like to see that improve before we jump in, going, "Oh yeah, wreck." I, I would like to see some improvements on on that end. Well, you know, on the tax side, you know, with wreck, we're going to see more tax dollars, and so you know, some of that, some of those dollars may go to coverage. That will be one benefit that that uh, we probably hadn't thought of. But as the industry grows, you're going to see more and more dollars going on and to the medical side. It's just, hard for me to be patient because we've been doing this for 20 years, waiting for everybody to, to keep, everybody keeps telling us, 
be patient. But it's it'll been at, happen eventually. That, and that is 100% true, but it's been at warp speed the last, what, two or three years? I mean, for I, you I, guys, I, for us, we're still standing still and stepping backwards. Every autistic so parent has said the very same thing. You know what? This is where the political decision is made. Everything can't be afforded, and those are the hardest decisions. At every ten dollars a gram, my medication will cost me sixteen hundred and fifty dollars a month, including the that, that's before so the sales all, tax. So you're all for lowering prices in the stores, then, Absolutely. and no tax revenue. Well, I, and the, and the I, license. I, no, I, I believe. Like, I think, I think it can be taxed. I think if you're looking at fifty dollars an ounce, you know, some of that can be tax money. Like, I, I think of this as an agriculture product. So right? open up the production of it. Have fields of it across the prairies of Canada. <laughs> but you, you bring up a really good point, though, Tracy, on the, on the on the fact that there is a real danger that the rec market could steamroll the medical market. I, I think absolutely. You're, I think you're right on that. I, and, and I don't think that would continue for years in the future because they'll balance out. But I do think in the, probably in the early days, there and has to be a really strong voice on the Health Canada side to say, we have to make sure there's set asides, right? And, and, that's, and that's my you know, biggest concern on this end is because, you know, most people don't understand the medical marijuana program or didn't understand the intricacies of the medical marijuana program until they needed it. Mm -hmm. And at this point, what seems like, you know, it's, oh, it's only a couple of years to you. Well, if you're very sick. Yeah, that's true. That, that a couple true. of years a is a lifetime. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that, that's that's 100% true. And and they could be proactive and they, they proactive from the point of view of making sure the taxes aren't on the medical side. Uh, and, uh, and we've got groups like CFAM and we're trying, but again, you know, patients don't have those same dollars and those same access to open those doors that say, large companies and, and, and other politicians or government advisors may have to get in through those doors. Mm -hmm. on, on the rec side, kind of building on what Bob was talking earlier, there's political decisions, because this is really a political issue when it comes to the taxation. Is the risk not that all this money, although it's short-term earmarked for certain areas, it's not just gonna go all to the general coffers, just like alcohol does today? Just what I said. Sure. Short-term earmarked to sell it to people? And long term, or and we got another bag of money that we can put into wasteful projects, or whatever they're up to. This, this stuff. It's a politics of marijuana, politics of job creation, politics of hydro, politics of everything. Is all the same. Well, this is it. You know, I've been trying to think about this as more along the lines of, of a federal issue. But you know, if we go back to Ontario, like I still don't understand. I mean, after what Ontario has done to the LCBO and what has Ontario has done to the the hydro, how did we do this again? I think that's because it's not a business decision, right? It's a political de decision. If it had been a business decision, they'd grab private enterprise and they'd roll out 600 stores and have them ready to go by the time legalization hits. Well, there's going to be a lot of open hands for this tax revenue, clearly. Mm -hmm. uh, what and, was this? and then the political hands trying to put it into general revenue. I mean, I think the one area that, um, you know, education is a really hard one to, uh, for me, it seems like an unlimited budget. I mean, what is the right number for education? If you think use? for one single moment, one cent of that is going to go to a specified area, I'm going to call you naive on that. It's going to a general coffer and they're going to be able to tag it and say, look at how we're doing education. But that's just money that was already said that's going to go there. And it's just been relabeled as coming from this point. It doesn't matter where and, the money goes and into the And truthfully, I'm, I'm kind of curious as to where they're getting the money now. They're spending money before they've ever gotten it to mm -hmm. take care of enforcement and, and this education. $30 was borrowed. And, and, like, well, certainly, I mean, so the Ontario what, government has put some allocation out federally. They are spending and building the infrastructure for a lot of the retail. Uh, it's going to be a net negative cash yeah. uh, situation for various governments. Uh, but obviously the idea, the hope, is that we're taxing a very large five to ten billion dollar industry over time. Mm -hmm. well, but one thing this. we haven't done, Chuck, is we haven't talked about the hidden tax, right? And, the, and that is the mm -hmm. big, big tax. So the big tax is when the government's collective purchases from the licensed producers and then they farm it out through the dispensary arm. How much is their cut going to be there? Mm -hmm. So I mean and that and the distribution. I mean you can, Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean it's really that is a that will be a tax and, and on the industry, that, right? That's going to be a tax on the in, it's going to be a tax on the consumer and a tax on on the producer. And that goes yep. directly into the general coffers because yeah, every every province, province and territory that is uh, spoken up if you will on what their system will look like will control the distribution and that middle that middleman piece yeah. between producer and retail. Yeah. Well, I think it's time that we roll this up. Thank you all <laughs> for joining me. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks Chuck. <laughs>